please remember to check out our other videos and click on the subscribe button and click on the bell icon so you get notifications each time we upload another video. Hi folks and welcome to another episode and welcome to the fantastic Horwin EK3. Now I've been riding this for I said the best part of a week and I I'm pretty impressed. I'm pretty impressed. Um, Horwin, we've been riding their, their bikes, their prototypes and their pre-release models for a while now. Um, and they've slowly they've got better and better and better. They've modified a few things and this is no exception. Uh, in terms of styling, well, if I just walk around it and show you, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm sorry about the birds tweeting in the background. I'm stood in a field. So the styling's really good. I actually took this to a friend of mine who rides a Ducati and he looked at it and said, really like the styling. So he was really impressed. So that's not just my opinion. That's another chaps as well. It's got a lot of funky features and it's well specced uh, in terms of what you want on a modern day bike. So it's LED'd up everywhere. It's got touch screen on it. Uh, it's got remote start. Um, it's got a removable battery like they normally do. So you've got the off board charger, uh, but you can charge it on board as well if, uh, if you so wish. So all in all, so far, really liking it. Now, let me just show you the really good bits. Let's take my helmet off there and pop that down on the charger. So here's the key, uh, this little white thing. Um, and here is the emergency key. So I'll show you this first. If everything goes south, you just lift this up. Oh, a bit fiddly. Pull that out and you can use the manual key in there. So that's if this doesn't work or the remote battery goes flat or anything like that. So you can still ride the bike. But so long as you've got the key on your person, you can just come along to the screen, put your finger on there and swipe it. And all being well, just like that, it will fire up. And then down here, quick press on that button and that brings into ready mode. So really liking that. You've got three speed settings or power settings as I like to call them. Uh, so number one, that restricts you to about 30 miles an hour and it restricts the power as well. Uh, number two, I, it seems a bit hit and miss, but I, I sort of got that to about 45. And then number three is the full beans. Um, and I've had 64 miles an hour out of this, although the rate of speed is only 60 miles an hour. So quick look at the screen then folks. So this is your total mileage. This is your trip mileage. This is your power gauge speed. And that's your, dist uh, that's your remaining battery uh, percentage. So easy to read lights up very nicely at night and um, this changes color as you ride depending on what speed you're going so nice to touch that if i come down here you've got a little bit of secure storage in here um, it doesn't appear to be waterproof however it is a quite a tight fit i mean i don't think any rain's going to get in there it's a magnet that holds it so and if I look up there, you can see there's a USB. And actually that's quite a powerful USB. It does um, quite a decent job. I use it to charge my GoPro and my phone when I'm out on it. And uh, yeah, works okay. Now the battery is a 72 volt uh, and it, I worked it out to be a roundabout, which I'll just show you under there. I worked it out to be about 2.88 kilowatt hours if my maths is right. Um, it's a big old unit, but again, removable. Look at this straight out and out it comes Just pop that down there now that is not the smallest battery in the world but it's quite good in terms of the energy density i've ridden their previous bikes and normally you get two batteries uh bigger than that to get the same range and the same power so and um, so that, that's good they've got uh, they've moved forward in that uh, that aspect and obviously if you wanted to you could have a second battery so you can pull one out chuck it on charge and chuck another one in if that was suited to what your your lifestyle was if that's what you wanted so popping it back in hand down quick lift in on the top plug down job done easy as that now you can charge it two ways you can charge just here if the battery is out of the vehicle or you can charge just under there if the battery is in the vehicle so on board off board whichever suits your needs. The charging time, which is done by this little jobby here, very similar to previous setups we've seen. Just plug it in, front or in the top of the battery, is rated at four hours. Now, I'll be honest, I charged it and it, 
it was done in about three. So I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just the very worst case scenario. Four hours, but three hours seem to do it for me. And this is what the charger sounds like as it's whirling away. If this is given the rated range, which I'll be honest, the range that they're saying at 45 kilometers an hour is 100 kilometers. So that's 60 miles. That's a big old range. And with my riding, I've not I've not achieved that. Uh, I've got closer to about 50, but if you do ride it at 45 kilometers an hour, which is about just under 30, then it probably would give you that range. I'll be honest, it wouldn't surprise me. Now, let me carry on with the good stuff. So if we come back to it, I've got the key on me, quick swipe across the screen, fires up, power mode, LED lights all around. Everything is LED. So. You see you've got this nice DRL here these are constantly on right across the front and then you've got your LED lights there I've ridden this at night here for the purpose of testing them and they are excellent really really good if you come down to the side you've also got this side light and this is all great for bikes because one thing you need on a bike is visibility and this gives it so and then we come around to the rear and then we're LED all the way around there as well and again you've got that other side DRL if you like and then if you come to the front, hazards just there. What I like is when you turn the hazards off, they stop, there's a delay, and then these lights sort of fade back in. It's, uh, it's a nice touch. And then the same goes for the front. In fact, if I switch the hazards off now, while you're, while you're looking, you'll be able to see that. Bit of a delay, boom, and it comes back in. And I'll try that on the rear as well for you. And then, oh, that's nice, it's nice. Nice touches like that. Just make it a little bit more refined. Um, I actually haven't looked, even, oh, even that's LED. Why not, why not? Now then, if you look through there, you'll see we're on a chain and sprocket, which is a bit strange. We often see, uh, we often see that these, um, these are running belts. Um, but you can actually see the size of that sprocket isn't that big, which means there's a massive amount of torque off that motor. There needs to be because that is quite a low gear for a bikes that normally have a much higher, a much higher ratio, if you like, with a bigger sprocket at the back. So again, very good. Now, if we go around to the high beam, you can see there your high beam LEDs. They probably don't look great at the moment, but um, they are really, really very good, really good. So no problems with lighting. I want to come around to one of the negatives which I've noticed and something that I don't know if it will affect you too much but it, it's some, definitely something I notice while riding through the towns. Um, the suspension on the front which it doesn't look to be adjustable, um, it's a little bit wallowy. It is a little bit wallowy. It's not, uh, it's not giving me the sort of feedback I'd want and occasionally I felt like this was resonating. I didn't feel like it was as reactive as it could be. So that could, that could probably do with toughening up. But bearing in mind, this is a, like a 125 equivalent moped. It's a CBT legal bike. So it's not the sort of thing that you're going to be hammering it around and working the suspension too much. Okay, so looking here, you can see that you've got these little coilovers. Again, this is non-adjustable and I feel that you probably would want to adjust it, especially because you take two people on there. So you've got these nice spring out foot pegs and if you're having a pillion on a regular basis, you're probably gonna to wanna to be able to adjust this up. I certainly would anyway. And I've had a good look and I can't see anywhere to adjust it. Center stand only, there's no side stand. So you've only got that method of propping it up, but it works okay. And then if I come around and have a look at, quick look at the brakes, you see uh, discs on the front, um, disc on the back and twin lines. So obviously these are linked so, uh, to balance out the braking. I'm going to say I think this is better built than a lot of other internal combustion bikes and probably electric bikes that I've seen. Everything seems to be well bolted down and put together. This, All the plastics are on well. The grab handle, you'll lift the bike up with this. Come around to this little rear fender there. It's solid. Everything's just really well put in place. So I can see the improvements that they've made over the time that they've been bringing bikes to the UK. And this is absolutely no exception. 
onto performance and I think you'll be impressed. This will pull really well up to about 40 miles an hour. After that, it tends to ease off a little bit. And it's a bit of a slow run up. If I was to ride it on here, which I'll show you now, it will just wheel spin and you'll lose the back end straight out of it. So keeping up with the flow of traffic is no issue at all. I don't think you'll have any problems with the way that it rides. Only my one reservation again is back to the suspension, just a little bit wallowy for my liking. I'd like it a little bit harder. Um, the previous Hormin actually, the CR6, they'd really improved on the suspension. It was a really firm ride and it gave you the feedback that you want where this doesn't. But again, I've got to remember the type of bike it is. It's a moped. It's for cutting around the towns and it's a commuter bike. So for most people, you'll have no issues at all. No issues. Another funky little feature it's got, folks, is if you press that button down there, which is actually the ready button, and press and hold it, you'll see a little R comes up on the screen. Um, and that is a uh, reverse gear. And I've got to say, <laughs> it, uh, it reverses at quite a speed. So um, quite useful for getting it out of the garage and uh, things like that. But now... You'll often hear people saying electric bikes are too quiet. Well, this one most certainly isn't. The chain, sprocket and motor have made doubly sure of that. The EK3 actually gets down the road really well and despite the soft suspension, it maintained a good road holding right up until its maximum speed and never gave me the feeling it was getting close to its limit. If you're interested in a purchase or test ride, please contact Artisan Electric Scooters where you can find the bike that we're testing here today and many others.